What's up? Hey. How <laughs> goes it? Hey. hey, Paul Gabriel. Hello, Mr. Mike T. How are you? <laughs> Good, man. How are you doing? Great. So we're excited here. We've got another industry spotlight. And as you all can see, we've got Mr. Mike Thompson with us today. Uh, this is going to be another really fun, good stream for everybody to really learn some great tips from Mike. Uh, he's going to re really be focusing on how he's using ZBrush and to make 3D assets to actually create a 2D image. And in particular, he has been contracted out by Intel to do uh, a nice little video that we're going to share with you here in a little bit. And he made a piece specifically for them for this that segment. So he's going to be breaking down that piece a little bit and show you all the processes that he likes to use with inside of ZBrush to get the end result. He's also going to be showing how he gets out of ZBrush into Photoshop, Photoshop to Painter. So this is going to be a really good one for all of you that really have wanting to make maybe a final 2D image and an illustrational look more. Um, so Mike, thanks for joining us. Uh, thanks for having me. Thank you. Thank you. Glad to be here. So I, everyone, as I always say, you need to buckle up for this as always. Uh, it's going to be a lot of fun. So we're going to we're going to start with showing that Intel video and then we're going to come back and then we're going to hand it off to Mike and then Mike's going to break everything down for you all. So it'll be a lot of fun. So let's go ahead and play that Intel video so everyone can see uh, what Mike's been working on. I think as artists, we create what we know because it's a reflection of who we are and the things we love. I'm definitely a hip hop gamer, sci-fi junkie, and that's what I create. Whether I'm working on a movie poster or toy packaging or, you know, a sculpture, I like to immerse myself in that culture through books, movies, music, just to get in the zone and inspire myself. And I think that adds an element of authenticity. That's really important to me. I've always felt like my creative station is a precarious one, as though I'm only one bad job away from being irrelevant. That fear forces me to push my boundaries and always look for new ways to put my own unique creative stamp on everything I work on. So moving into digital was just a natural progression. It was that new place where I could further my creativity. But coming from a world of pencils, paints, and clay, I'm always looking for that tactile connection to the analog world. And I get that when I'm working in Corel Painter. The experience is incredibly realistic. The way the paints and inks bleed and run, how the brushes react to the surface and pressure, it's the closest thing to an analog experience in the digital realm. And when I add that to a Wacom device, the tactile sense and pressure sensitivity, it blurs the line of analog and digital. And with the power of an Intel machine, where the experience is fast, fluid, with no lag or interruption, I'm able to do more, tell amazing visual stories, and create at a higher level. That's the chocolate and peanut butter moment. I'm Mike Thompson, and I'm an artist. The chocolate and peanut butter moment. Mm, best <laughs> candy ever, Paul. So then you're a Reese's guy? Reese's you know it, Pieces man. and Reese's Pieces Cup? Yeah. Uh, Reese's Cups. Reese's Cups. I don't mess Reese's with Reese's Cups, not the Reese's Pieces. Okay. Yeah, All right, I'm a purist. So uh, awesome! Congratulations on an awesome video working you, with uh, the team there at Intel and um, Corel and Wacom as well. So congratulations! That was really cool. Um, Thank you. Thank you. So Appreciate it. What we wanted to do for you all is we invited Mike over to show you how that process has been done for him, breaking that down. Uh, so what we're going to do is put his screen up, and I'm going to let him take over from here. And as cool. always, as you all keep an eye on the chat for Mike, and right. if there's questions coming through, fire away. And I will do my best to try and get as many as I can to Mike. But of course, he's got some stuff, a lot of things he wants to cover. So sure. all right, I'll let you take it from here now, Mike. I'll be quiet.
Thanks, man. So um, uh, if we can make my screen big for a second, I just want to share some stuff with you guys. Your webcam? Uh, so I'm sorry, not my screen, my 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 face. My Your face. Webcam. Yeah. There, there it go. is. Excellent. So uh, some of the clients I've worked with are guys like Mattel, Hasbro. Um, uh, and, and what I would do was I would get um, characters from them before they come out, obviously. And, uh, and I would need to create the box art. So I would create an illustration based on whatever the, the, the toy is. I did a lot of these Infinite Earths collection guys. Um, you might know some of these guys. Maybe, maybe some are a little more familiar than others. But, um, but yeah, so that's that. Uh, and also with Hasbro, right? So like G.I. Joe guys was, was kind of my jam. And what I found was I was running into um, problems where I would have all this tactical gear on them and, uh, and, and just figuring out how the light kind of flowed around the characters was, was difficult for me when it came to the actual painting. So I turned to ZBrush and uh, used it to kind of figure out what the person with all the gear looks like. And uh, now we can go to the screen. And, um, and, and then just do some basic lighting. And then once that lighting was done, uh, I use that to create my my final drawing and then the paint over uh, itself. So if we look back at uh, this piece, so <clears throat> this piece started off um, as as this kind of a you know just really quick comp. Uh, Intel approached me with Corel and said that uh, they um, they wanted something that kind of felt like this piece. They liked this creature type of a piece. Uh, that I had done for for a class of mine. And so I was like, all right, well, that's cool. Let me figure out, um, you know, let me figure out this thing. And uh, and I thought it might be cool to have not only the creature, but also like a driver. So, so with the fish I had, you know, I had the fish as the driver and then this kind of biomechanical dude is is the creature itself. With the girl, I wanted it to be one of these things where it was... Um, you know, she's like a in a VR headset, and this is her avatar. So, of course, it's got to be scary and cute at the same time, and and that's what I what I came up with. Uh, so, this process is the same thing I've used for pieces like this turtle, and you know, this uh, this painter piece right here. It all starts off as a ZBrush sculpt, really rudimentary sculpt, and then I use that to uh, to paint. So, if we go back over to the sketch. This is what I sent to them as um, just kind of the direction that I wanted to go with the guy. Uh, and after comping it out like this, it was very easy to figure out what I wanted to do. I ended up changing, like I didn't like these, you know, double joint, triple jointed legs or whatever, double jointed legs. Uh, so I ended up going with more of like a, uh, almost like a simian type of a stance where he has giant forearms and little legs. And, uh, and I thought it might be cool to have a, you know, a, some type of a monitor on him or whatever. So that was it. And uh, so I gave him that. And then I went into ZBrush, right? So if we hop over to ZBrush. I like you went with the CRT monitor too, not the LCD. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I had to go old school with that one. Yeah. So this started off as just, you know, Z-Spheres and uh, put those together, um, you know, skinned it. And this was my base. Once I had that base, I started to sculpt on it. So this is kind of what I kicked over to do renders. But if we turn on solo, you can see that I chopped them up a little bit. Let's see. Where's legs? Oh, lower body. Do you normally start with Z-Spheres for a model like this? Is that your go-to for your base? I, I, I kind of don't. But for this one, I thought it made sense. You know, um, yeah. it seemed to... It seemed to give me what I needed really quickly, and I could get the pose and the the you know the um, proportions really quickly that way. So you know, just chopped it apart and then started detailing things like the legs. Uh, I always like to do poly painting um, in ZBrush. Uh, that allows me to get an idea of what I'm going to do as I'm illustrating. So I just kind of threw some colors on there. Uh, figured out the, I wanted him originally he was going to have like these, 
I'm like dating myself, but like these Mork, Mork and Mindy suspenders, like these rainbow suspenders. And I was like, ah, oh, let me see what it looks like if I put on, what did I end up going with? I think I just went for a million solid. points to the audience. Huh? Who was Mork? <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Exactly. <laughs> Nobody knows. They're oh, all man. too young, Paul. Yeah. Well, listen, we're all, Mike and I are going to do this probably often pull old stuff. It's like <laughs> exactly. Exactly. So, uh, and then I was, you know, I was thinking that, hey, um, I saw this picture of Fat Joe wearing these Kanye boots. And I was like, hmm, this, it seems like it makes sense to throw these type of boots on this dude. And so, of course, he got the, uh, he got those boots. And, uh, and then I started figuring out the girl, right? So um, that was the deal. So I love that I can quickly kind of sketch in ZBrush. So, you know, going in and just figuring out this stuff, it doesn't cost a lot as far as time is concerned. Uh, so I was able to iterate, uh, just throw a quick texture on there. I wanted him to have like these, uh, almost like socks on his arms or whatever. And because uh, it gets cold, you know, it's, it's kind of chilly. Uh, and then some buttons. If you don't know this about me, Buttons are kind of my go-to. So if we go back to Photoshop, um, in my turtle dude, my last turtle, which I did before they came out with the last Ninja Ronin thing, way before. Paul knows, because I did this for you guys way back in the day. This was my idea first. Uh, then they came out with the comic book. But no, I, I, I love to throw buttons in there. And that's that's kind of what that is. So are you, do you put buttons in on every piece you're doing? No, no, no. But I, I mean, sometimes, hey, listen, you can only be so creative, right? Yeah. You can only have so much creativity. So I dip in the well. If Do it works, if, it does, if it's not broken, I go back to it. Do you have a button collection? <laughs> I, I do. I do have a button collection. <laughs> you didn't want to reveal that information. <laughs> I didn't want to say it on the air, but thank you. Yes, I do have a button collection. Darn it. Well, there you go. Right. Buttons. Nice way to nice way to throw your, like, just secretly hide your signature and stuff. Just throw it yeah. on a button. Nobody knows. Some flair, uh, get some flair going. Yeah. Yep. So that was it. And 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 my thing with this is I wanted it to have a lot of texture, right? So that's where Corel Painter comes in because I was able to, and I'll jump into Painter and show you guys this, but I was able to get a lot of, um, you know, various textures. I don't like when one thing is like everything is smooth or or there's you know everything is noisy or whatever. So I like to mix it up a bit. That's why with the monitor. It's got that kind of old CRT feel that that Paul was talking about, but then you know the the skull is kind of double. It's like a double exposure type of a thing on it with the half tone. Um, so you know that's it, All right? Same thing with the non skin. HD. Non HD. You said what now? Non HD. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's it's very it's very four four twenty. Is that what it was back in the day? Four eighty. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so yeah, that was it. Um, I did my poly painting for the dude uh, right in ZBrush, which was great because it helped me to get some of these textures. Um, I did this on my fish guy as well, and it makes it a lot easier for me. So if I solo this out again and zoom in, um, being able to use just regular alphas like that veiny alpha and just some stipply type of, uh, you know, um, spray painting and things like that allows me to get some really rich textures on here that I can then do BPR passes. So, uh, you know, this is just like the method that was around back in the day right before we had like these amazing renderers that we have now, which was just doing multiple BPR passes and kind of layering them on top of each other to get uh, to get the look you're going for. So if I can pop do back you, over to um, happen to have any of your um, stuff you've done for hip hop someone was asking if you got any hip hop influence work which i know you have a ton yeah 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 the icon stuff yes uh let's yeah. see do you have any of that up so they uh, can see let's see so yes mike is one of the go-to people in the world he's done cards he's done covers he's done it's endless so yes to that person marlon asking the question you're talking to the right guy yeah yeah i i, I don't know about in the world but i do all right oh I'm um doing I'm putting you. So this is probably what they're talking about, which is, let's see, can you see? Yeah. Um, I used to, so it's very weird. My 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 career kind of started off in t-shirts. 
Um, I got with this company called uh, Echo Unlimited, which, you know, I was the creative director for their T-shirts and they were tied into hip hop. So I got to meet and paint a lot of these artists. And um, and then uh, this was my collection that was selling for a while. But like all of these pieces are things I've done for like books and magazines. Um, Smithsonian has a, a piece of mine in it and uh, things like that. But yeah, I'm so hip hop. I'm sharing your ODB sideshow piece in the chat too. Nice, thank you. Um, so yeah, let me move this back over here. So yeah, um, so if we go over to some of these passes, this is what I did, and and I just set up some some quick BPRs um, with with my lighting in different places. So if I hop back to ZBrush and go down to my lights and just kind of move them around. You can see that I would, you know, do one from up top, do one from below, and then kind of do all these different angles. And I would shoot those out to, uh, to Photoshop and then Frankenstein them together. I also did a uh, clown pass, um, which if you're not familiar with that is just I made these big kind of clowny colors that I could easily just take my magic wand and select. So it's easy to, you know, go and say, hey, I want his chest, select similar. Um, and then it gets all of those colors. And then I can I can go to town and start to paint. And I don't have to worry about lassoing them out. Um, so uh, so yeah. are you then sticking with mostly standard materials in ZBrush since you're using the light? You're, are you using any madcaps? For the most part are you sticking with standard yeah so for the matte caps it's more like metallics so you know um i wanted to get different specularity in certain places so i did mm -hmm. um you know different metals for the matte caps but i like to use the um basic material i went and did a uh i just modified the basic material a little bit pushing up the specular uh highlights and pushing in the shadows pushing the shadows down mm -hmm. and uh and that gives me a nice effect um, that I can make a bunch of these. And then when I do, and then I had like an albedo, which is just a flat color. Uh, so I had that. And when I do that and I put them all together, I end up with something like this. All right. So pay no attention to that green screen. Cause that's easy to select and get, get rid of that. And when you do, I can, uh, you know, when that's done, I have this nice, uh, background back here that I just, took a gradient and added some noise to it. And then that's, you know, eventually going to become this thing. So uh, taking that comp where I have my skin texture, I have my metallics and, and, and basically I take those and turn them down and use them as I need. Like I've rim, rim lighting is all isolated, right? So there's rim lighting, there's, there's these things, which is, let's see, that's my, that's a bunch of different comps that uh, are BPR passes rather that I've turned on. You can see there's a ton of them. Um, turn those on. I have like a line drawing and then um, I can turn those up and down as far as the opacity is concerned until I get something that is my beauty pass. And once that's done, um, I will, let's get rid of, uh, let's turn on the green screen, right? Take that take it into Corel Painter, and uh, I, I just kind of go to town. So if we go back over to Painter and zoom in, this is not finished, but it is kind of like the process, right? So now I'm going in and airbrushing some of these highlights. I figured out that I wanted to have lights in the, uh, in the, in the gauntlets originally, um, before we passed it through legal, I had all of the people that I was working with on this. So we had, it was, this was a cool piece because it's the first time I've done like a multi sponsorship type of commission. And it was Intel, Corel, uh, MSI built and sent me a machine and Wacom. Um, I was using their gear as well. Uh, so I had, I thought it'd be kind of nice to have like a, a race inspired type of a blue gauntlet on one side and the other was just like a plain white one. Um, I am not by any, you know, stance, a, a hard surface guy in ZBrush. There are people who do it much better than me. So 
what I did was I just kind of came up with the basic shapes of this thing in ZBrush and then uh, using Z Modeler, which has saved my, saved my tail a bunch of times, um, got it to look good enough and then shot that into a uh, painter and I uh, painted in all my cut lines. And then that gives me something that looks way more detailed than it actually is. Uh, so that's all that's going on there. And then I had a bunch of reference, right? For the girl, I thought, why not throw her? I got this picture of my daughter when she was little, where she was wearing these duck boots. And I was like, oh, man, that's super cute. Let me throw these duck boots on this girl. I don't know why she's wearing them. But um, put those on there. And uh, and then, you know, the little happy face on the VR helmet just because. And uh, and this guy becomes like her protector slash avatar. So, so that's kind of what's going on there. Yep. I get kind of crazy when it comes to details. So you'll see if I go back to the final piece, like I'll noodle and noodle and noodle until I come up with a whole bunch of, I'm also a big Drew Struzan fan. If you're a 2D artist, you probably know who Drew Struzan is, but that is the, uh, the, the, the man that did most of the, the movie inspired posters that are yeah. the movie posters that inspired me growing up. Um, Indiana Jones, ET, Star Wars, everything. If everything, it's ever been everything, no movie. movie, he did it. Yeah, everything. He's yeah. got a great book for those that don't know. I got it. Awesome. There is the what? Yeah, you yeah. got it. I he got it. Of course, he's amazing. Yeah, yeah, it's dope. So his thing is he kind of has hatching in his stuff, and then I was like, all right, well, with my work, it tends to be more realistic. And what I don't want is for people just to think that I take a photo and just run some filters on it. So I like to go in and um, and paint in a lot of, you know, this hatching. If we zoom in, my stuff is made to look good from far away. Like if you zoom in, it's scribble scrabble, right? Like that's all it is. I made I made a career off of scribble scrabble. Um, that's all it is. But from far away, it looks pretty good. So official term now, scribble scrabble. <laughs> Yeah, hashtag Scribble Scrabble hashtag 2022. Scribble. It's a t-shirt now. Scribble Scrabble. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. So so um so that's it. Also, everything I do is uh, listen, I'm not reinventing the wheel. So all of my stuff has a rim light. Like that's just what it is. I love rim lights on my stuff. I'm very comic um focused. So everything of mine of any merit whatsoever has a rim light on it. And there's a 50% chance it's going to have buttons. So anyway, uh, that is that. So the cool thing about this project was that um, the so the, uh, the the machine that that the MSI kind of made for me was the latest um, the latest architecture for for Intel. So um, it was fast, right? And then Corel came out with, um, you know, not to turn into a commercial, but Corel came out with their latest version of Painter 2023, which kind of optimizes for that architecture. And so what I can do is I could use brushes and color pencils and stuff that really, um, it gives you a very realistic look and it, um, uh, and it, uh, it just moves really quickly, right? Like the, the, the stuff just really looks great. Oops. Yeah. You know, so I can get some very realistic. I love using this uh, to paint as opposed to Corel, or I'm sorry, as opposed to Photoshop because I'm able to get very realistic kind of uh, real world painterly textures, like the scratch brush I use right here is kind of clutch for me. I use it a lot. And then color pencils over top of it. I can mix things that don't really mix well in the real world. So, you know, oil paints with color pencil on top or, you know, watercolor and oils or whatever, you know. So, um, so that's, uh, that's kind of the long and short of it. Can you show a couple of your light passes that you do in ZBrush so people can grasp that? rim lighting like a couple of lights that you like to do absolutely absolutely so photoshop yeah um let's go over to photoshop this is 
So I save, you can see, I, I get a little ridiculous with it. So like, these are all the passes I did. It's a lot, but um, yeah, so like, let's do, uh, where is it? So here's, that's one of the metallics. Let me open up some of the regular, like the, the rims and all that. M6, oh, that's metal. Right, so this kind of stuff, while it doesn't look like a lot here, it gets some really cool stuff. So, you know, if I'm looking at this skull, you know, it's it's kind of it's kind of cool. And when you add that as a like if I was to copy and paste that as a screen and then add color to it, it looks um, really nice. But let's go down here to here is an example of one of my passes with the color, you know. Um, and so now I could take this piece uh, using that clown pass, um, but really the because I do the green screen thing. And let me just show you this real quick. Like, I don't know if people do this or not, but uh, I just took my document and I went to the background and kind of, just kind of drug over here and grabbed a kind of a green screen color. And now when I go to uh, let's turn everything on. Where is it? Um, turn off solo. All right, so here's everything. Perspective. Another thing that's important when you're doing this, I learned this the hard way with my GI Joe guys, is once you get an angle you like, lock the camera. So if you go over to um, your uh, your draw, you can either lock the camera like this, or you can go to uh, movie and turn on your timeline, show timeline, and then you can set uh, a marker, right? So if I set the marker, this is actually a little better because what I can do is I can unlock the camera. And if I come back to the beginning and let's say I move this thing around, I'm like, oh no, I just ruined it. I'll never be able to line this up. If I come over to this first marker, it goes where it's supposed to go. So that's kind of dope, right? So find the angle that I want. And then at this point, it's just going in and getting light passes. So now I have, uh, I can render this, do a BPR. I'll go up to my, um, uh, go up to my settings, go to the shadow. I usually bump this up to a higher uh, ray and give myself a, a bit of a blur to it, like four, not a whole lot. And then I just do a, um, see, I moved it, right? But I can go back there. And I just do uh, enter. And once that's done, uh, right now it's set to AA half. This is another thing that I, I like to tell my students is, you know, make sure that once you're done with this, you set it to actual and turn off AA half. All right. So like that's kind of cool. And I would go to document and then click on the actual here. And now it's big. It clips it on my screen, but if I look at my thumbnail, it's still within the boundaries there. That's fine. Um, and then I just uh, export. All right, make a folder and save it as one. Like that's one of a billion. And then I can move my light, go back to a half, I could draw, no, sorry, draw a document, go to a half, and then I can get different, different angles. So I usually do one light at a time and uh you know get some dramatic type of oops get some dramatic stuff top bottom left right once that's done i can turn on my rim and turn off my front light and then for the rim i can set that intensity the way i want um for this i usually turn off colors right so i'll go over here and i'll just uh, hold down shift and click on the paint paintbrush and now it's black and white and I can get some pretty cool edge lighting. And this is the material that you made based off of this. Yeah. Material. He's yeah, not yeah. using that cap. The, the person was asking a question. He's using a standard material. Yeah. So it's it's based off the standard material. Actually, this is this is actually basic. So if I go over, oops, I go to my material. Oops. All right. So this is what basic looks like, right? Actually, let's do this. 
So that's basic. And then mine is, come on now. Mine is, uh, oh, actually, this is this is basic. So it's hard to see the difference here, um, but I guarantee you that it makes a difference here. Let's go back to a gray background. The, the shadows are just pushed back a little bit. The highlights are just a little more punchy um, and uh, on mine, like a little tighter. And, and that generally makes for a good, uh, for a good BPR. I do this a lot when I'm, uh, so like if I'm posting something on um, Facebook or whatever, of like uh, an arm that I've, I've sculpted with anatomy, you know, like muscles and all that, I'll do a turnaround um, and, and render in here uh, rather than going back and forth to ZBrush using like the old school layer method. That's another thing that I like to use a lot. The legacy feature, so some people don't really know about it. Not yeah, it's, the, all the subtools are taking on the same material right now. Yeah, because they're the the lights are or the uh, the brushes turn off. If I turn the brush back on, they all come back. So if we go here and let's say I want to do something that I want to send the client for an approval. I will do like just a, a straightforward light pass. This. And, uh, so how many passes do you think on average you usually do before you send it to Photoshop, go into Photoshop? Do you have a, um, it, you have like a default, hey, I always do these passes? You know, I don't have a number that I use all the time. So I'll usually do, actually, I take that back. So I'll usually do, um, I rendered it and then I touched the screen and killed it. All right, there it is. Uh, so I will, um, I'll do like top, bottom, left, right. And then um, kind of like a, a three quarter top, three quarter bottom, left and right. And uh, it's for the, as for the lights. For as the far lights. as the light goes. So yeah, you got yeah, the front. And you're doing one light at a time with each render. So you're doing mm -hmm. two, yeah. four, six, sounds like. Yeah. Right. Yep. And then eight, eight. And then and then that's just for the that's for the front light. So then right now, what I would do is I would say bake, right? Then create a new one, draw it out again. It it keeps that nice little BPR that I had before. Oops. Let's see. Let's see. Draw a new one. So this is what you're doing for approvals. You're doing this is what I would do for an approval. Yeah. yeah. So just so the client knows what's up, I would now kind of give them a side pass like this. Um, and then let's say I wanted this to be a little more dynamic or whatever. I can move the light. It doesn't affect the other one. But let's do this. Right. And then let's maybe give it a rim light so it looks a little more cool. All right. Like that. And now I can render this. And and then I can hit bake again, and it will save it all to the screen. I like to do this because it's faster than me having to take these into Photoshop, cut and paste them, worry about, you know, does the corner overlap the other piece? And is it going to, am I going to need to do, you know, some like selective clipping or whatever? Um, I can just do it all right here in, in ZBrush. And then once I like this, um, I will hit actual. And then now I can export it. All right, so let's just call this. Uh, well, comp. Save it in. Uh, my How many of you do you usually have to give them for your approvals? Not a lot. I mean, I, I give it more is more, right? So I always give them more than they they ask for. Mm -hmm. um, but generally, I like for them to see. You know, it's only going to be rendered from one from one angle, so it really doesn't matter to them. But I like for them to kind of see what's going on in the piece, so this way they can see the boots a little better. Um, right. So now I could just kind of crop this a little bit, maybe turn up, uh, brighten it just a little bit, so they can see what's happening. And send it to get an approval. And then I can write notes on there too, like, okay, um, I want to make one of these things blue and it would be cool. Now, 
this is something that I do a lot when I'm posting in social media is I will um, take a sculpt that's fairly early on in the process and I will make notes, right? So like, boom, Intel, you know, bah, da, 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 this is this, this is this. And I'll just call out, add, you know, logos, maybe race um, inspired, right? Um, this one is going to be blue, you know, this make it a CRT with a uh, halftone. So if I call out all these things, it does two things. It's, it's good because it helps me remember what I want to do. And I can add a lot of details really quickly. You know, like maybe this has like this fishnet type of a hose cover. Um, you know, this is going to be a happy face. It's going to be whatever. And so I can add a ton of notes on my stuff and then go back and sculpt again. So I do a lot of hopping between ZBrush and Photoshop back and forth, back and forth. And then once I'm happy with the level of detail, um, I did this for this zombie Captain America piece I did. I had like a ton of notes, but it helped me because I was able to go into ZBrush and I wasn't just like, what did I say I wanted to do with this part? I had it like right in front of me. Um, so then I sculpt all those details in, you know, like uh, you know, figure out what this says on the shirt. You know, maybe she has on, uh, I don't know, uh, maybe this is, she has like these things going on. I don't know. Um, but uh, maybe he has them too. Right? Little dealy yeah, boppers. Kind of there you go, yeah. <laughs> uh, but yeah, so like I can take this now and um, make those changes. And then when I'm happy with the passes, then I kick it over to uh, Painter. And then I actually do the illustration. So the final painting is always going to go. Everything leads to Corel Painter. I do my illustration in there. And then uh, once I'm done with that, I'll kick it back to Photoshop. Uh, say I'm doing something for a movie poster. If I have to get likenesses, I will kick it back to Photoshop. I love using their liquify feature. So if I'm trying to get the likeness on Brad Pitt or somebody, I, I'll go in there and play around with that a little bit. And, um, and then maybe once I get the nose a little better or whatever, go back into Painter and then paint that up a little more. So it's very fluid. I jump between programs a lot. Um, but the final product, the, the final piece, you know, kind of speaks for itself. So for someone that maybe watched that has never had to do client work and things like this, when you're doing these approval process, is there a minimum resolution in your images that you send so that it, they're large enough for them to zoom in or? Yeah. I mean, I'm not sending for approvals. I'm not sending 300 DPI. So I come from a print background. Mm -hmm. So for me, everything was 300 DPI um, because that's just what it was for magazines and books and all that. Uh, so I still think that way. I never do anything 72 DPI. I just don't. Um, but I will do, you know, 4K renders and things like that, that I can send to them, um, that they can see what it is. They're not going to be huge files. Most likely when I get to this point, I'll just, you know, kind of export this as a legacy, like a save for web, and then look at the size of it. You can see here that this is, you know, you know, 2K, but the size uh, usually tells you, right? like I can, I can turn down the quality to maybe like, uh, I don't know, like 70%. And then it says down here, it's going to be, you know, less than, less than. I love it still gives the at 56.4 kilobyte, like yeah, old exactly. school dial yeah, up yeah. numbers. <laughs> yeah. So then this is, you know, a good size that I can just save it drop it in an email, shoot it to the client. They'll be like, you know, yay or nay, or, you know, maybe let's change this one thing. I noticed that when I was working with Sideshow, this mm -hmm. was clutch. Like I did a lot of, I was doing that Darth Maul Ahsoka piece and there were things that I was sculpting that I was like, well, for the lightsabers, I want them to look like they're mid swing. So I made them look like they're, you know, swooshing or whatever, as opposed to just a, a stick. And, uh, and I was like, I don't know if they're going to go for it or not, but let me send it to them and see what they think. So, you know, did the sculpt, did a render, shot it to them really quickly as, as a turnaround. And um, and they were like, yeah, go for it. Do it. Nice. You know. 
So yeah. yeah so the, the, the 3D ability is opening up different angles for you, different advantages for you to get into your 2D process. It's 100%, 100%. And this is, I mean, when I first started, you know, kind of doing streams for you guys, this was kind of, this was my thing is that I'm, I'm, I'm coming from a 2D background. Um, I have been illustrating and painting in some capacity all my life. Uh, I only started sculpting maybe seven years ago, but, but I, and I did that out of necessity because I was working on these things and I was, I, I just needed to know how to do, you know, how to add gear to, to, you know, these avatars. Mm -hmm. Um, and what I found was I loved it so much. I was like, you know, I want to learn this and I want to make my own statues. And, and so I just continued to do it. But most of the time when I'm getting paid from someone, it's for a, uh, you know, it's for either a poster or, you know, book or something like that. And it's 2D. So you had mentioned Z Mahler has saved you multiple times, especially a person like you coming from a 2D world. That's yep. very boxy 3D. And we might have a bunch of 2D people watching. Could you share a couple yeah. tips about 100%. how Z Modeler has really helped you? So that yeah, you yeah, absolutely. Wrap around that. Mm -hmm. So just so folks know, if you're if you're an illustrator like me or a 2D guy like me, I don't consider myself a 3D person because if you were to put me in Maya or any 3D application and ask me to move around, it's going to be like painful, right? It's painful for me to use that. Um, I know you can do dope stuff in, 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 you know, those, oh, sorry, cinema 4d, um, you can do dope stuff in those things, but I am not, uh, I'm not good at it. So what I learned was, let's go back to a half, let's clear these out. If you want to, like, if you do that technique that I was talking about with getting these things on your screen, you're like, how do I get rid of them? Uh, go to your, um, layers layer and this is layer not layers because there's a layers which is something different uh but you come over here and you just uh delete and it'll get rid of it and you can hit clear on this one you know clear it out and then you just draw a new thing hit t and it's back All right so um let me come over to the background right let's turn off the color So a good example, I'm doing this He-Man sculpt right now that I have to do hard surfacey stuff like the uh, the helmet for Battle Cat, right? And I am, uh, if I had to just sculpt it, it would look really kind of wobbly and unsure and all that. So what I normally do is like, say I'm working on these gauntlets, select these and go to solo and fix the light so it doesn't look so weird. Cut this off back up so you might say to yourself you know these look kind of hard surfacey kind of looks all right this started off as um i just took a shape this shape which was a cylinder so if i were to duplicate this and just go to a uh, q cylinder i had this right um so just select this thing and now I can switch to my, uh, oops, I can switch to my gizmo and then just kind of size it and selectively mask areas, right? So let's say I want this part to be bigger, scale that up. Um, maybe I want to get it to have kind of a, a taper so I can select that part after I mask the bottom and then scale it down, maybe drag it up, you know, this kind of a thing. And I can continuously add loops and, 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 um, and get this to look exactly the way I want, right? Just by selecting the thing I want and scaling. So once I have this, scale this part down some, right? So make like this little Mega Man thing. So once I have this, I can either continue to detail it. Um, uh, so now I could uh, go and in here, if I want to uh, inset this end cap, I can go and say inset uh, poly group all, go to legacy 
and just click on this and kind of drag it in and it gives me this type of a deal right here All right now that i have that i can uh hover over the green part extrude uh, poly group and i can just kind of push this in and then i can do beveling right i now i can really have fun with it so i have that shape now i can bevel edge loop complete kind of get myself a bevel here get myself if i just click here now it gives me the same width on the bevel like click and click all right so that's cool um now the reason i like this so much is I don't have to subdivide this and then worry about going back and editing later. I can just hit dynamic and see what it's going to look like. And it looks pretty good. Like it's kind of close. This is kind of what I want. But um, oh, and why, do, why is that there? I have my <laughs> my Windows thing is here. I don't want that. Get out of here. How do you hide this, Paul? Well, the taskbar is a right click and tell it to hide. Getting on your taskbar settings and tell it to hide. Uh, task view hide. Mm, no, no. There should be. Uh, I haven't. Is this Windows 11, right? Yeah. Yeah, I've never even used Windows 11. I don't know. Why it should be in there, somewhere. Probably probably in there somewhere. Okay. Let's see. Can I switch to? It's alt only when tab. I... Someone's saying Alt Tab. Alt Tab. Okay. Alt Tab. Try. Well, that right. just gives Let's... you. Go back That's, to ZBrush. Alt tab. Yeah, that that they'll just give you all the programs. He's trying to hide his taskbar. Yeah. Bottom. It's covering up my thing at the bottom here. But anyway, um, so now let's just say I need to see this though. Hmm. Oh, I mean, they, they oh there you go. Wait, you know what? I'm sorry. I didn't have it maximized. Oh, okay. Is. Sorry, Microsoft. That was not your fault at all. It was user error. So now I can turn up my smoothness subdivisions and I can get it to look kind of, you know, sexy. So now it's smooth. However, you can see that it's 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 soft at the top and I don't want that. Like I want it to look kind of hard surfacey. Those bevels, I want it to be hard surfacey. Uh, so I'll turn off dynamic and then now I can do some selective creasing and that should save the day. So here, hover over an edge, hit crease, edge look complete. And this is something that I, I learned it um, when you guys released it. It didn't come quickly because there's so many options. But much like Corel Painter and everything else, I learned one thing at a time until I got it. So I still, like if you were to ask me to do the transform stuff, uh, I'm, I'm a deer in the headlights. I, I still need to learn that because I, I pull the wrong control things but luckily i can do most of what i need right here it's a little holding edge right here and now if i hit dynamic this right so now it's look at those that mm, those bevels that's that bevelly goodness right there son <laughs> um so i like that and now this is kind of what i needed for the dude and then at this point it's still super low right turn it off it still looks like this and i like to keep my topology really low so if I want it to, like, say this is one of his gauntlets on one side. Now I can grab my move tool and I can maybe make the one side look like that. Oops, is it doing it on both sides? Both sides. Yeah, you were Do in it on one side. Okay. Turn off symmetry. And then on this side, I'll kind of just pull it in. So now it kind of looks like a forearm, which is what I want. Boom, like that. And then I can take this thing and I can grab my move tool and move it over. Oops, a little bit over. Hit uh, mirror and weld. And I got two of them. I can adjust them if I turn on symmetry again, kind of bring them closer. And this is the way that I uh, this is the way I got the dude. So I'll come back over here, and that's that's how I did it. The the the, the details on top of that was just me going in and, and doing the same thing, adding. Uh, another, I, once I have this part done, I'll usually make everything out of Q-cubes. So now I'll just duplicate this. I'll grab a Q-cube. Uh, I'll turn it into a uh, Q-cube, rather. I right? turn off dynamic. And now I just uh, add edge loops and pull points until I get what I want. And I, if I want something that's a very specific shape, what I can do is get rid of everything but that front face. Right, 
greet hidden. Okay, which it's on. I can kind of get the shape that I want. This is how I made the sword of Eternia that I'm working on right now. Is I just kind of played around with okay, so shape. Single, I have you're single plane right now for those. Yeah, this is just a plane. Watch. That's all that is. Right. And I could just add a plane, but the, I, I, I love starting everything from the cube. So once that's done, um, I grab my Z modeler and I just extrude some thickness to it. Right. Um, and then I can start to add details, right? If I want to have like a nice kind of edge going on, I'll pull this out. And maybe now what I could do is I can just slide the edges and make start to get these shapes that are you know, a bit more intricate than would be before, right? Add a couple holding lines here, maybe one here, and then I hit dynamic and you start to get something that's it's getting there, you know? So now we have something like this. So this is the way that I normally, you know, make stuff. So then I could take this piece and add it to the gauntlet in some fashion. So anyway, yeah. I love Z Modeler. I use it for everything. Even organic stuff now, believe it or not, I make base meshes. They all kind of start off as a cube. Mostly. I think a lot of hard surface ends up starting off with a cube. A lot yeah, of it. Exactly. It's just a, that or a cylinder or a sphere. Mm -hmm. Those are the three main pieces. So this whole, let's go back to one where it actually looks impressive. This piece, uh, not here. It's not there. This one. This arm here was me trying to figure out a robot arm for, they use this actually on the Corel, what was it, Painter 15 box art. And I was like, oh, I wanna do this piece and I want it to be kind of cybery or whatever. This is before, way before cyberpunk. But I was like, yeah, I want it to be kind of, she's a cool robot and she's running so fast that she's turning into paint, like blurring off or whatever. So, um. I'd seen iRobot and I was like, mm, okay, I wanna steal that idea of the clear kind of, or the translucent milky plexi over top of the innards. That was a cool look. Um, so I, I pilfered that and threw it into my design. And then in here, I did some kit bashing on some parts and then I kind of made my own parts and used that as a base, which I painted over. And believe me, this didn't look anywhere near as impressive when it was in ZBrush. But you throw it in a painter, spend some time with it, and uh, you look like a rock star. So everything I do is kind of this workflow for the most part. Right. So all your main parts of that arm you modeled, and then yeah. the cut lines, a lot of the cut lines and stuff, that's painter paint. You're painting yeah. that in painter. Yeah, basically. Yeah. Yeah. This was an interesting one because I use Marvelous Designer as well. And, and I'm not very good at Marvelous Designer, but I figured out the jacket in there. And I kind of made the pants, but the pants weren't looking the way that I wanted. So I ended up just sculpting in ZBrush and painting design, you know, painting details and stuff like that until I got it to look the way that I want. But um, I'm sure that if I spent more time learning cloth physics and I, and I actually was able to get um a handle on the ones in zbrush i i do want to play around with those some more because i find that i just need good enough folds and then i sculpt them up like i love to that's believe it or not that's one of my things that i really enjoy i find it kind of like zen like is sculpting fabric um so um uh, you know I, I i've seen pavlovich and all those guys just rock with with the uh the cloth kind of physics thing in, in here so anyway that's uh that's kind of it and then from this so this was your base mesh yeah. so he had obviously hands and everything are you building the hands off this or are you inserting them as a different sub tool and getting no what i are you that's okay. kit bashing in that sense too no i actually sculpted the entire hands and then i looked at them and i didn't like them um 
just a hit. But you, you hit save. Oh, yikes. Don't do that. Cancel. Load. To open. No, oh, that's not it. My naming conventions aren't the best, Paul. <laughs> um, is it? It's behind the curtain, everyone. Behind the curtain. <laughs> All right. So then you can see I start to get, oh, this guy. Yikes. All right. This is what he used to look like. You can see it all sucks until it doesn't. That's behind the curtains. That's one to grow. Yeah, but on. I think every artist should know. I think every artist has that. It's a journey, right? Figuring out the yeah. and getting through it. Yeah. So wait, so this looks like you roughed in some of that hard surface right there, though. I did. I did. So originally I just kind of used the damn standard and sculpted it in. Get your idea. And uh, I took that and I used ZBrush to make it, or the, uh, I'm sorry, the Z modeler to make these shapes. So that was, um, that was that. A good example of that, let me see if I can find this thing that I'm working on now. Look at that mustache on that guy. Oh, Louis Tucci Legend. just walked in. Legend. Louis Tucci. Look at mustache on that guy. Whoa. Whoa. Go ahead, Tucci. Get on camera. Look at the mustache He's on you. We love you. <laughs> What's up, Louis? The Tooch. <laughs> nice. Back in the fold. Back in the fold. Mm. Tucci in the house, baby. Yep. Yeah. All right. So here is a thing that I'm doing on my stream on Friday nights. He man. But, uh, huh? Is that your He man? Is your He man? Yeah. He man. And I, I shared a link in the chat to his He man most recent stream as well. So it's in there. Thanks, man. So you can yeah. see eventually he'll have a face. Eventually, Granger will have a socket for his eye. But you can see this thing right here. Uh, this is what I wanted you to see solo. Yeah. So this is what I was playing around with the other night. And this, there's an artist that I love his stuff, like, or, or their stuff, like Kios Masons, right? So Marco Pluff is dope, like super, super dope. And I would watch him do his hard surfacey stuff. And he sculpts most of it mm -hmm. and uses like the H polish. And I was like, dang, dude, you know, all this time I thought I had to actually go in and, you know, box model these things in some fashion and, and get it to look, you know, really, really good. Um, but what I did with this one, let's see, load helmet. Let's see. Um, where is the, oh, here you go. Battle cat. Ah, uh, oh, crap. I had it somewhere. I had it, Paul, believe me. Battle cat whip. Let's see, open. You're using a chisel brush? Yeah. 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 All right. So this was like, uh, this was all the pieces. Mm -hmm. This is when it, you know, was clean, but it started off looking like, there you go. Started looking like this, right? So this was just me taking the thing and using the H polish and using damn standard and just kind of digging these lines in and moving things around. Um, once I had this, I, and again, this is not my technique. I st stole this from Marco, um, but I just kind of made groups and split them off. And then I would split hidden and give them thickness. So now I could take this piece, which looks pretty clean, and I could give it thickness, right? Start to give it some nice creasing and edges and and cut in some some little details. And then... I take this piece and do a history state, state save up here on my timeline, and I would Z remesh it, and it's and it's it's really nice. So once that's all done, it gives me uh, it gives me the look that that I want. So and now this is really like soft, right? There's no details on here, but now I have something that's a, a usable mesh that I can go in and and really start to add, you know, alphas and boolean and this, that, and the third to make it look like it's worthy, you know? Like Do that. you um, have to submit several rough sketches of your pose for your illustrations before you go into ZBrush and add all the details? Um, so most of what you're seeing from me is, is just stuff that I'm doing for myself. Uh, but if I'm doing it, like say it's a sideshow piece, they'll usually give me a piece of concept art first. 
right? So if we're looking at that mall Ahsoka, they gave me a, a really nice kind of a drawing from the front of the throne where they're fighting each other. And then I need to go in and make it feel like that. So, yeah. So the, the cut lines in there, you sculpted those with chisel, right? Yes, that's exactly yeah. what I used. I love uh, the chisel brush, especially brush. with the more target, because then you can have yeah. non-destructive erase. Yep, and I'm then I use the chisel brush, and I just kind of cut them in. I turned on my, uh, made sure my lazy radius was turned on. Piece that I'm using. Let's see, solo, solo. Then, like Paul said, I stored a morph target. Uh, right, store it, and now if I mess up, I can just kind of go back. But now I can. Just kind of pull out these oops turn off color and, and as long as i have a good enough resolution now i can kind of go to town oops. mask glass on i can drag this out and then get something i like that yeah that's the way i was able to get these little pieces down there and around the eye and all that stuff yeah it's a lot of and if you don't like if you don't like something like now that you have your morph target exactly yeah it. i'll just switch back boom clean or if I like something, but I decide that I, you know, maybe there's a part that I screwed it up, I can just uh, pull up my morph brush, uh, boom, and then I can paint out that. To, uh, I can paint out that particular part and redraw it. Yeah. Uh, maybe I just don't want to have that there. Right. Yeah. Got yeah, it. I use that a lot myself too. It's, I love that workflow. Your helmet that you have, it's in your office. Is it? Is it over the other side? No. Okay. So you have your helmet. I remember you did the big fall. Talking helmet. about. Hold on. You're talking about that helmet. There it is. There it is. I saw that in person, you guys. I was in Paul's office, oogling his stuff. But yeah, th those details are like that. That yeah. That Joseph Dress did that one. Ah yeah, I remember Joe did. That. Yeah. Yeah, that's, right. that's Joseph Dress. Yep. So, um, yeah, I yeah. think if you, you start experiments, a lot of experimenting, but I think what you're showing opens up for non-destructive workflow to allow the experimentation to happen. And, and when you're somebody like me who isn't incredibly um, confident when it comes to hard surface, it's a great way to, uh, you know, to, to just play, you know? So like if I, if I, I've been doing some of this organic stuff for a while. So I'm, I'm kind of confident with that, right? So like I can cut off my battle cat, is it? cut off the base. And somewhere this dude is here. Cut off this guy. Right. And then kind of come over to the He-Man and let's turn off the color. Right. So like this stuff, this stuff I can do, you know, but when it comes to like his chess piece now, this is this is new for me. Not new for me, but it's not it's not my it's not my comfort zone. So now I'm just kind of figuring out what I want to do. I'll go in now that I have these straps and I'll add the details. Like I said, I draw over everything. So I took this piece and just did a quick. Uh, let's do this. So like take this angle, maybe a side angle. Oh, I would take this, go to actual, hit export real quick, uh, desktop, and call this sketch. Spell it right. Um, and save, right? So then now I can go into Painter or Photoshop or whatever and uh, open the dude up. And now I can figure out my details, right? So this is this is this is what I do. Um, it saves me a lot of time. Figure out 
the details you want to put in 3D or yes. Yeah, so this is for using, sculpting. You're even using the 2D in essence. You're starting in 3D, throwing in the 2D, and then using the 2D image to figure out other 3D elements you want to add. One hundred percent. That's yeah. that's the way I do it. So okay. it's much faster for me right. to figure out uh, and iterate in sketch mode. Yeah. And then now, because if this sucks, I can just say, "Ah, oh, man, I don't like it. I'll just cut it off. I'll make a new one. I'll erase it and do something else." But right. now I can come in and I can say, "All right, well, you know, I know that this should have like this thing sticking out here, like a, a rim, and maybe this has like this or whatever. Maybe he's got like a, you know, one of those name belt buckles with the H on it. Um, Amaze. Figure out whatever's going on in the back there and on the the." This thing, maybe this is cloth kind of wrapped around here to make this interesting, right? Yeah. But this block out that I quickly do with Z Modeler, I can go into ZBrush and figure out my details, then hop back into, you know, maybe I figure out the hair. Hair is something that takes me a while, right? So, like, I can just kind of decide, maybe I don't want it to look like the little Dutch boy or whatever, you know, kind of decide how I want these strands to look. And then once that's done, hop back into uh, ZBrush and add those details. I did that on my, um, I did that on my uh, Lion-O uh, and the details are like bonkers because I'm able to draw them out and then, and then figure it out. Yeah, it's a great see. idea. Like, yeah, you're in essence, you're starting in ZBrush, go sketch out, wrap your head around exactly yes. what you're wanting to do quickly in a sketch mm -hmm. on top of the model and then now go model. 100%. That's yeah, exactly that's cool. what I'm doing. So uh, like, have you saved your good. material anywhere? Someone's asking for your material if you're willing to share it. Uh, I haven't saved it. Well, I, I, I have it in, I, I saved it for myself, obviously, but do this. If you don't mind, um, I have a show on Friday night with my partner Bradley called Stylus League. Uh, we do a lot of walkthroughs. We've had some dope guests like Ashley and, and, Pavlovich, Eric Sosa. Paul's going to share a link tree for me. And if you go to our YouTube and uh, subscribe, then I'll uh, just DM me um, and I'll give it to you on the, I'll give it on the, on the show on Friday. No the, problem. Was perfect because the link tree was literally just shared in the chat, like a awesome. couple of chats ago. <laughs> uh, Here, I'll copy and paste it again. Thank you, man. Um, if so, and someone's asking if you have uh, share any fur techniques that you did, like to know how. You yeah, so the <laughs> fur is not. So I do it the OCD way, uh, um, which is it's not fun. Um, but I've seen Pablo. So shout out to Pablo uh, with ZBrush Guides because he's the boss when it comes to brushes. And, uh, and, and I like to use his stuff with fur. I end up going in and doing it manually, which sucks, but you get a really good, I, you get a good, you get a really good kind of result with that. Right? Like, so I will, I did it on his boots recently. It's out. I'm still working on it. So it will start off like ice cream, soft serve this thing, right? Solo it out. Soft serve ice cream. And then I go in and um and then I go in and kind of use the the damn standard to figure out big kind of cut-ins on this thing. And this is and, and the only way I got this to work right is this is a dynamesh. I don't use dynamesh a lot, but when I do, it's usually something interesting. Now, this is from a commercial, Paul. Um yeah, I don't use Dynamesh a lot, but what I'll do is I will, in order to hold detail, um, I'll Dynamesh this and I'll use Sculptures Pro. It gets heavy. So what I end up doing is I will hide some of the mesh. Right? And then with Sculptures Pro turned on and I grab my, my damn standard, then I go in and I start to cut in some of these details, right? Like heavy, the, the hard ones. Uh, then once that's done, I look at the model, make sure that everything kind of lines up the way I want, right? And uh, it would be easier if you could see everything, but you can't. So then once I have that, I will grab like uh, this slash three 
or I have this brush that that I made with my buddy Brad called uh, Happy Trails, um, <laughs> and it uh, it's really good for getting like details. So I can raise it up and cut in, and on the size I use, I can get this level of detail. These are single individual strokes, one at a time. Uh, if you're completely insane and don't have a life, um, this is the way to do it. But there are much, much smarter ways and probably faster ways to do things. Uh, yeah, so like I can just now push this in and play around with it. But you can't argue with the results. Like this piece right here, uh, originally, now I stole this from my trap draw. I did a trap draw a while ago and I didn't finish it. So I was like, you know what? I got perfectly good fur pants. Let me steal it from trap jaw and put it on E-Man. And, uh, and so I did. And then for those that don't, Sculptures Pro is adding dynamically tessellating at it. In essence, adding polygons as he sculpts. That's why he's getting better details. If I was to try to do it without it, I would run out. Like the topology fights with you when you're doing hair like this. Uh, and then I could Z remesh it. But if I'm not going in and like one really kind of cool way to do it that's smart is go in and make a I'll solo this out. It's like if I know that this group is going to flow like that, right? I can polygroup that. And then I can go and polygroup this one and this one, and this one. And eventually I have a whole bunch of different groups but the topology will be heading a certain way. Then if I go to Z remesh and I uh, turn on the um, uh, keep groups, uh, where is it? Where is it? Keep groups and detect edges. It's going to kind of respect those groups. And when I sculpt, it will kind of go with that edge flow. That's good. But I did this Bishop sculpt a long time ago where I had this, he had this nice mullet and, uh, and it, it was really, really difficult. So I ended up just using Dynamesh. It saved me a whole lot of work. You can see with, with Snake Hook, you can get some really nice details if you just mm -hmm. sculpt it. Yeah, especially with Sculptures Pro. Yeah, Sculptures Pro is dope. Yeah. Uh, ever since you guys made it so you can hide parts of the topo and yeah. continue to use it, it's mm -hmm. a lifesaver. Yeah, especially if like with 3D prints too. Man, I use it all the time to bump some details yep. that I've already done all the process on it's saved me on a couple models for sure sir so uh, so yeah that's uh yes, i noticed your hand looks like you got fingers separate i know hands are always a scary moment for everybody yeah separate fingers yeah so originally i saw daniel bell so anybody that knows me knows that daniel bell is one of my favorite sculptors and uh he like i was what Again, you see people doing stuff. It doesn't matter how much you do a thing. You can watch somebody and watch their workflow and be like, oh, my God, why didn't I do that? So I was watching one of his streams, and he made, like, one good finger. And then he took that finger and he cloned it and just, you know, bent it and played around with it, and he made a whole hand. And I was like, dude, I'm sculpting ten fingers every time I do it, which is not the right way to do it. So um, for this one, I did the same thing. I kind of just made one good finger and copied it. This is all on my last uh, last week's, the one that Paul shared, our Stylist League. Um, it was either that one or my last Pixelogic stream. I can't remember. But um, And then scale down the pinky, right? And, uh, and now all I have to do is the thumb. So you're sculpting two fingers as opposed to sculpting 10. Same thing with the fist, right? One good fisty finger. And then copy and paste it and donezo. And when you're done with all that, you just kind of either Boolean them together, Dynamesh them together. I like to use the Boolean feature. And then once I have that, I, uh, I'll retopo if I need to and keep it moving. Here, I'm going to share again the Stylus League. Thanks, man. In the chat. So you all have that YouTube channel there. It's got a lot of his He-Man stuff there as well. Uh, you said you mentioned you don't use Dynamesh a lot. I don't use it a lot. Um, Why is that? I use it when I when I need to. Like Dynamesh is one of those things where when I started using ZBrush, everybody was using it. 
-hmm. And I wasn't disciplined enough at the time. So I would, much like many people who use ZBrush early, they see these amazing finished pieces and they have all this detail. And I was like, ooh, more topology means more detail. So I would subdivide the crap out of my thing or I'd turn Dynamesh up to like a million. And then my computer would be like, dude, what are you doing? Like it would freeze up and and ultimately it, everything just looked really mushy and wobbly and my surfaces all sucked. So um, what I like to do like with this guy is um, step down on the subdivisions. Um, you did so cover the hand in your last ZBrush stream and I just shared that to everybody. So what he was just talking about the hand, he already streamed it. And I just shared you that stream so you can go back and watch that. Yes. Yeah, if we look at this, I first, and again, it's it's back and forth. So um, because I knew I had a pose where I was really going to move him around, move this arm back, and it was going to completely tear his his pectoral muscle completely to crap, I I first did him in a uh, in a symmetrical kind of a relaxed pose with arms down. Then I took the arms and grouped them and ripped them off of them, right? Tore them off, closed the holes. Then I took the, uh, the, the arm that's flexing and just rotated where I want, kind of pulled it back in the right direction and, uh, and sculpted up the detail. And once I was happy with it, I end up, you can see I still got to add the fingers back. But once I was happy with it, I dynameshed it or uh, bullioned it back together, right? So now I have, it was messy. It wasn't pretty, but now I have the shoulder where it's supposed to be. Uh, everything kind of lines up where it's supposed to be and, um, and, and it's connected. So once that was done and I liked it, I sculpted in the things that needed to be fixed. And you always, whether you're using a rig or you are posing with transpose master, whatever, you're always going to have to fix those areas. So I fixed them um, and then did uh, use Z remesher to uh, to uh, remesh it using polygroups. So because I had polygroups, again, it kind of respects those those form changes and and follows the directions that I wanted to go. And I was able to get a whole lot of detail without having a whole lot of polygons. Um, so that was done, and then I continued to sculpt. Oh, the same way that I jumped between ZBrush and Photoshop and Painter and back to ZBrush, I will go from Good Topo to Sculptors Pro to Z Remesh. And because it's so easy to Z Remesh, I, I do it frequently. And I find that uh, I'm going to have to, you know, even though this Topo is kind of kind of dope for me right now, I got to add those fingers back at some point. So I'm going to have to do it again. He looks I'll so just kind of do the same thing. Add the fingers, see, so remesh it. Move it. Boom. Go on. Next thing. So our, I, um, someone asked in the beginning, you've got an any cubic printer. Are you planning to print this one? Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. So I have this one and I have this companion piece that I cannot find. My, my lion -O. Let me let me just do a search. Maybe I can find it. Um, but I have this Lion-O, which I'm really going, uh, I'm going ham on it. Uh, Lion-O. No. Sorry, Paul. No, we're no worry. Today. You're sharing a lot. So I know they, I'm sure they all appreciate everything you're sharing. Uh, sharing We've really gone down the tangent, <laughs> <laughs> tangent world. So. Yeah, it's opened up a lot of conversation. Nice. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, I'll find it while we're talking. Ask me some questions. I'll look while I'm doing this okay. thing. Okay. I answered, uh, someone asked a question about the thumbnail. Mm -hmm. uh, so I gave you the preferences. You can't lock that down in case someone didn't see that in the chat. You can change the size. You can also add an image in that as FYI as well. You can change the color too. Um, of that little thumbnail thing in the top left corner. Um, so, so is that the only printer you have? Is the AnyCubic one? 
You no, know, that's the only resin printer I have. But on the floor back there, I have basically rule of thumb: anything that Rafael Grissetti buys, I buy. <laughs> uh, so he did a video where he had he had his Ender, and I yeah. was like, "Oh, he has it, and it looks awesome. Let me get that same thing." So I got the Ender Five. I think he was doing the uh, uh, like a review for the three, and yep. so the five was out. So I got the five. And then I got the uh, Photon X is my resin printer. Yeah, I and think with it's good that, to have both if you're going to get into it. A, a you said resin. what now? I think it's good to have both if you're going to get into it. Have a resin and have an FDM. Yes, the, the FDM is so much cheaper, so you oh, can yeah. do test runs on the FDM, and it's not costing an arm and a leg. Yeah, exactly. Um, although the resin printers now are. The resin itself is only like 30, 35 bucks a liter now, so it's not like it's super expensive either. Um, open it. Yeah, I'm excited to see this He-Man piece. This is awesome. I'm a massive, big He-Man fan as a kid. <laughs> Me too. Oh, man. Um, I think I gripped I just... that thing for, wouldn't let it go as a kid for a long time. Yeah, I love it too. Here it is. Open, will you? Open. How much time do you usually give yourself to do a piece? <sighs> That's the problem, Paul. Mm -hmm. Um, when they're my own pieces, part of the reason why we started Silas League was to actually hold ourselves accountable for personal pieces and finish things. So if I'm doing something for a client, I'll finish it, no problem. Hit the deadline, no problem. Because if you don't, yeah. you lose that client. Right. But for my stuff. I'm like, oh, well, this could be better. So I started this Lion-O piece, I'm not even kidding, a year ago. And then I put it down and did everything else. And now I'm just coming back and I just added the fur and all this other stuff recently. But this is one of those things where I'm never, <laughs> you know, the print song, like maybe I'm like my mom, she's never satisfied. Uh, I'm never satisfied with the piece. And uh, so uh, I'm trying to get better about that. This one's almost done, and I will finish this, and I'm going to finish He-Man, and they will sit together majestically on either side of my desk flanking me. That's that's my promise to the, to the How universe. big are you going? 18 inches? Quarter scale, baby. Quarter. Quarter scale. Wow. Okay. Yes, sir. So I'm going to do a swap out head on this one. He's yeah. going to, and again, this is kind of like, even though it's a personal piece, like I'm doing stuff for Sideshow, but I wouldn't mind doing stuff for XM or Prime One or whoever. So um, it's a portfolio piece as well, trying to audition. Um, so I'm going to do a swap out head where he has more of the human face with the face paint. You know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, and then he has like the kind of the badass lion head. And for He-Man, he's going to have the Dutch boy cut from the cartoon. And then he's going to have like an actual hairstyle or whatever. Just going but, through the 80s classic cartoons. I like it. That's my era. It's my era. Yeah, I love it. Me too. All things 80s. Oh, I miss the uh, Saturday cartoons mornings. Oh, absolutely. You know what? Who would be cool to do? I think, I think I'm going to talk to Bradley about doing a... So we pick a theme for every month and we'll bring on somebody and we'll, we'll work. So this month is Masters. But I wouldn't mind doing... Remember Silverhawks? Yes. I was seriously just thinking that in my head of like like that little series. Yeah. They would, well, that had like one season, I think. Heck yeah, man. Heck yeah, yeah, do a little little monster action. I wouldn't mind seeing a realistic monster. Yeah. Yeah. Captain That'd Planet's good. That's a good one too. He's 90s though, right? He's more 90s. Was it 90s? He's isn't Captain Planet? I don't know. Oh, Captain oh, Planet. Oh, yeah, yeah. Coffee talk. Coffee talk. Captain I would Planet, have to 90s, 80s. <laughs> I would have to do Captain Planet, Don Cheadle Captain Planet. Have you yes. seen that skit? Yes. yes. It's hysterical. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> That's what I do. I'm saying yes to that one. <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, you never so, know. You can tag him. He might just hit you up. Hey, you never know. Yes, sir. So I, you can't see it over here. I have a, I have a snowboard that I did. That is, uh, it's, uh, it's. Uh, these people said, "Hey, do whatever you want on a snowboard," and, um, and uh, we'll, we'll, we'll make them. And they made like eight of these things. For this writer named uh, Alex Dumerge, I think is his name. But uh, I did a black exploitation theme, and so it's called Hell Up and Hell Up in the Alps, mm -hmm. and it's got uh, here. Let me show you this. Hold on a second. 
Let's see if I can get it. Uh, there. Find it. All right. So it's that right there. You can kind of see it back there. Yeah, can you make me dig? There you go. Going full screen. There you go. Boom. Yeah. All right. So that is the snowboard. And uh, and so I tagged um, Michael Jai White because I'm a big Black Dynamite fan. And and he actually hit me back and was like, oh, this is dope. So 100% I Love would that. do a tag uh, Don Cheadle. So Captain Planet was 1990 to 92. Nice. Yeah. And then again, it looks like a 93 to 96. Yeah. I like the Rick and Morty homage to Captain Planet. That was pretty sweet. I love it. I love me some yeah. old school 80s cartoons. Can't go wrong. <laughs> you can't go wrong. 80s of the decade period. Let's just embrace it, people. I love them. I, I love, love the it. 80s. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. Everything was neon. Yes. Yep. Anyway. I digress. These are great. I can't wait to see the uh, printouts too. You're, that's one fourth as big. You're going big. Thanks. You're not messing around. So listen, you want to talk about big? Let me show you something. Uh oh. What is he bringing now? <laughs> I have this piece that I started about a year ago, and then I started to um, here make, make make the camera big one more time. There you go, big camera. And then I started to You're make molding. molds. You're molding, okay. And around halfway through, I realized I don't like making molds. So yeah. I'm only halfway done. But making mold, this is the Hulk legs right oh. here. Yeah. Right? Um, yeah. This is one of the hands. <laughs> okay. Okay. Yeah. Um, and huge. The pizza resistance. I know that's how you, not how you say it. All right, here you go. Well, let me show you the whole thing first. So here, this is before I realized that a box mold is probably not the best thing for this because this is like not, not no lie, it's like 40 pounds <clears throat> and, and like 300 bucks worth of silicone. But here's the upper body. Right? <laughs> yeah. There you go. So you want to oh, talk about yeah. big? This is big. That's big. Yes, and this was being this like is, thirty-six inches, forty inches. Um, when it is put together, it's funny because my son, who's as tall as I am, was holding it. It was like half his body, but uh, yeah, like twenty-four inches, something like that. Twenty, twenty-four, twenty-six, something like that. Wow. So it's a it's a big boy. That's awesome. Yeah. Well, that's an artistic fun project right there. It was until I got to the mold part. I don't like making yeah. molds, man. It's yeah. not fun. I'm, I'm with you. For me, anyway. So someone came with a question. How does a figure box look like when you design it, layout, size, and all? Wait, how does what now? Which how thing? does a figure box look like when you design it, layout, size, and all? So I'm assuming you're asking about the boxes he makes for the actual toys. Is that what you're referring to? Is that it? Like what he showed in the very beginning of this stream? Is that what you're asking about? Like this stuff? Yeah, like hold that up. Yeah. I think oh. that's what you're asking about. So yeah, if yeah, this the is... character boxes. Yeah, that's it. Yeah. Okay, excellent. So if it's this one, what they did was um they sent me the template of the box. So I knew that I could only have the illustration in this little section here and on the side. Right. The back is the same for all of this line. And uh, and so for this one, you can see it's a montage of roadblock fighting a bunch of like Cobra bats and stuff. But that same figure, they had uh, the Vietnam type era version with the chain gun or the Gatling gun. And so for this one, it's cool because I have the smaller front box picture and then the side is the blow up. Um, so usually they'll send me a template so I can see what size it's supposed to be for something like something like these pieces. Same deal. I only had the back on these, 
But this one was cool because like this is an oversized piece, this Metron with the Mobius chair. And then I could do the the side and the back because it's not a blister. Well, I guess, I'm sorry, side and back for most of these. Same for everything. Nice. Yeah. There you go. And then I was asking, are you going to use roto casting for that? No, you're doing it. You're just doing pour for that. I bought, so this is a problem. I bought a wooden roto casting machine. Oh, you did? Mm. And it's, this is too heavy and too big for it. The only thing I can use it for is like the hand maybe. And even this is, this is like four pounds. But um, I'm going to say, yeah, yeah, you know. Yeah, there's this definitely was not an art on the uh, filament art printer, by the way. Point for uh, casting and making molds. There's definitely an art form to it. Yeah. Yeah. It's called having somebody else do it. Don't do it yourself. Someone, knew, well, someone wants to know what the chair you're sitting in. Oh, this is a... Ah, sorry, I slept on my neck wrong, you guys. It hurts when I turn my neck. Um, This is a autonomous uh, chair. Okay. You can see it. Yeah, there you go. autonomous. I think a chair is an important part. You're sitting there doing digitally. Get a good chair. Invest money in a good chair, people. Absolutely. Like Absolutely. Invest, you're sitting on it for a long period of time. <laughs> I'm you one of those park your, park your on Easter on a good chair. Yeah. Helps. You didn't 3D print the uh, any of the um, molds, though. No, no. I thought about it for something else. I did this Iron Fist. Uh, that I actually painted and it came out pretty good. It's on my Instagram, but um, I thought about printing the molds for those. Somebody told me that was something that's smart to do with with um, smaller pieces. Is if you're going to do a paint on mold like this, you know, at, at this point I would have to do the um, the uh, like the strips of uh, the stuff they use for casts, plaster. Um, so I would put a hard shell on top of this, and then that way I can um, peel this off and then uh, have the shell and it holds in place. Um, but uh, somebody was saying printing out smaller, uh, the, the the outer shell, and then using the silicone as the inner shell or the inner skin that you fill is a good idea. But, so I'll give that a shot. I'm going to share his... Um ink tree again which has his instagram there um, in the chat so you guys uh, want to check out his instagram you'll have that everything he has online is in that one link thank you yeah 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 awesome and i hope that you know if, if anybody finds any of this use useful and uh and enjoys it you know obviously tune into my my pixel streams and um and and join me on on stylus league because we have we have a lot of fun there and uh if you're not careful you might learn something before it's done hey, all hey. right i think you got through everything that you wanted to yeah boom we did it we did it yeah, paul did it. yeah high fives high five, <laughs> high five. High five. High five. High my five. wife <laughs> yeah oh man that was great um well micah thanks so much man for uh being a part of this and showing people your process of using 3d to get into 2d and i love the part you actually 3d went into 2d figured it out and then went back to 3d and then did the parts in 3d and then the complete circle back to 2d 2d it's a great <laughs> great thought process for sure thank um, you thank you yeah i really thought that was awesome um it, and i think a lot of people could get a lot from that for sure nice thank you thank yeah you. um so thanks again uh i want to share my screen real quick because i want to put some news out there for everybody. So if you've enjoyed what we've been doing here with Mike, we got another one next week. Um, Marcus is going to be joining us and he's another 2D guy. He actually uses ZBrush to do book covers for novels and things like that. So um, it's going to be another really fun stream. Again, I encourage you all. Again, if you don't know, you can actually um, click on this reminder button right here and you can get emailed 24 hours um, and one hour before the stream actually starts. So you can make sure, and it's all based upon your time zone. So I, I would encourage you all to use this system that we've been. Same thing for Mike's streams. Everything's here in this calendar for us. Um, with that said, we're actually doing another stream today. <laughs> so I'm back. 
with my <laughs> man Ian. So we're going to be back at two o'clock. We're going to be doing a live Ask the ZBrush. So we're going to take your questions live, answer things. We've got some stuff prepped and something else we're going to be showing at that stream. So please join us again. So in well, that starts at two o'clock. So in two and a half hours, we're going to be live again. So please join us if you wish. It'll be a lot of fun to see you all in there and take your questions and we'll answer everything that we can. And then for those that didn't see, the Zebra Summit has been announced. There is going to be a Zebra Summit. It is going to be only virtual though. Okay. So I know, but still we're, we're ramping up to do some really cool, fun stuff this year for the virtual side. Yes. The sculpt off is back. We'll be having more news about that coming up in a, in a later these couple of weeks through here. So keep an eye uh, on this. If, I would recommend if you want to learn more about the summit, um, I would sign up for the newsletters that we have, watch our social medias, we're constantly going to be updating this. It's going to be November 13th through the 16th. So the sculpt off is actually going to be the 13th. Uh, and it's going to be anybody can participate like we've done the last two years. So I'm excited to see everybody being a part of that. We've already got a really amazing lineup of some presentations again this year. So we'll be announcing our presenters and the sculpt off soon. But I wanted to at least let everybody know the summit is on. It's going to be November 13th through the 16th. That's a Sunday um, through a Wednesday. So we'll have one day of sculpt off, three days of presentations and other things going on. We're really excited. We're building it right now as we talk. So please uh, come forward and get ready, get your calendars marked for this. And then hopefully for those that are watching right now, hopefully you can join us again in two and a half hours with me and Ian for uh, an Ask ZBrush live session and those streams. And then every Tuesday, keep an eye on our calendar. We've always got streams going on like what we just did with Mike here. And Mike, thanks again. That was a lot of fun. I enjoyed I enjoyed it. I enjoyed it. That's all that matters. Yeah. <laughs> not, <laughs> not all that matters, but listen. Everybody else is a bonus. All day about 80s if we really wanted to. I know. It'd be a problem. It'd be a problem. You'd be <laughs> losing subscribers quickly. <laughs> Talk about tangents. We're just <laughs> very way off for sure. Cool. Um, Thanks, man. Yeah, absolutely. And again, everybody, uh, check out Mike's pages. We've been sharing it in our chat. So you guys got a link to all this stuff. And then he's just done the Intel video. So, and all the work you shared, really amazing stuff, man. Keep doing what you're doing. It's inspirational. We all love it. Thank so you. thank you. Thank you, man. Appreciate yeah, you. Absolutely. So this is another session for Industry Spotlight. I'm Paul Gabriel. We've had Mike Thompson. Hopefully we see you guys again in a couple hours and next Tuesday as well. All right. Bye, everybody. Amen. Bye.